Hey everyone, Mauricio here, legal advisor to KenMcElroy.com, and today we're going to talk about some big time changes coming down the pipeline from the SEC that's going to have a major impact not only on syndicators who are raising capital, but also to limited partners, to people who are investing in these syndications. That change is going to be the increase in the threshold to become an accredited investor. In fact, Bloomberg not too long ago wrote an article that everybody was pointing out to that they thought that the accredited investor limitation or threshold was going to be increased from $1 million to $10 million, meaning that in order for you to qualify as an accredited investor, you had to have a net worth of $10 million. Now, naturally, that's going to eliminate a lot of people who today are accredited, but if this were to pass, would not be accredited. And so I've been getting a lot of questions about this potential SEC update that's coming down the pipeline, and I wanted to address that in today's video. Now, as you can recall, we actually did a video not too long ago about how the SEC is actually ex trying to expand the definition of accredited investor. And now with this news, it sounds like they're trying to shrink the definition of accredited investor, and that's creating a lot of confusion. And so I wanted to discuss that today because I've got my thoughts that it actually makes a ton of sense. So let's go through it. Number one, just so that we don't leave everybody behind, the current state of the law is that in order to be an accredited investor as an individual, you need to have a net worth of a million dollars excluding your personal residence. Or on the income side, you have had to have earned $200,000 the last two years with a reasonable expectation of earning that much this year. Now, what was exciting for a lot of us was that at the end of 2020, they actually started to expand that definition whereby in order to qualify as an accredited investor, you didn't just have to have the financial wherewithal. A lot of us have issues with having that as the standard in order to become an accredited investor because we all know very, very smart, sophisticated investors who don't have a lot of money but are certainly qualified to invest in a particular deal. And then we also know people who have lots and lots and lots of money and they're the dumbest people in the room. So the SEC a couple of years ago actually started to expand where you were going to be able to be certified, actually pass an exam in order to be accredited irrespective and irregardless of the amount of money or income or net worth that you had. Now the issue is that in the last two years, the goal was to start having some certification programs that the SEC was gonna roll out and that hasn't happened yet. So as of today, the only people who can be certified are really registered investment advisors, people who have a series seven or a series 82 or a series 65 they are accredited investors by virtue of that license, but nobody else uh, is available yet. We're still waiting for those updates to roll out. So when we heard about this update of $10 million now as a threshold, it sounded like we're going in the wrong direction. But when you really start to think about it, it actually makes sense. If you're going to expand the definition or expand the amount of accredited investors that you can have by going out and taking an exam and being certified, then it stands to reason that you would also increase the limits of the accredited investor threshold to get there sort of automatically, right? So instead of just being able to qualify as an accredited investor with whatever your financial wherewithal is, now they're having you actually go and take an exam and get certified, and so they're gonna increase that limit. Kind of makes sense to me. Now, is it gonna be 10 million? I don't know. Is it gonna be 5 million? Is it gonna be 3 million? What's the number gonna be? I believe that if you just adjust for inflation, you know, if you look at when the definition of an accredited investor passed in 1982, a million dollars back in 1982 was about $3 million today. It's about $2.8 million today. So it stands to reason that if you just adjust for inflation, that million dollars would go up to $3 million. So it's my personal belief that when the SEC updates their accredited investor definitions, that you quite likely will see an update from the, the threshold from the current million dollars up to $3 million. And that should all be coming down relatively soon. In fact, the SEC had said that they were going to be coming out with proposed rules and a request for comments in April of this year. And here we are already in you know, the third quarter of 20, uh, 2022. But it is on their regulatory agenda for the spring of 2022. And so honestly, any day now, we're expecting press release or something from the SEC letting us know that they have a, either a proposed rule to amend the accredited investor definition or at least request comments from the public. So as more information comes through, of course, we will make sure we update you with another video. But right now, it's a really, really big deal because as you can imagine, if that threshold were to go up to 10 million or 5 million or 3 million, it really shrinks the pool of accredited investors. And so if you're somebody who's raising capital, that's going to be a problem because you have less accredited investors to solicit. And if you're a real estate investor and you're investing in people's syndication, well, you may be accredited today and you may find yourself outside of that accredited definition six months from now.